Module 3, Lesson 3, Real World Positive and Negative Numbers and Zero. So this is a continuation of the lesson from yesterday. Except today we're going to focus on elevation with a fixed reference point instead of looking at temperature and bank accounts. So I can use positive and negative numbers to indicate a change, a gain or a loss in elevation with a fixed reference point. I can use vocabulary precisely to describe and represent situations involving integers. I can choose and apply an appropriate scale for number line when given a set of positive and negative numbers to graph. So here we have a picture representing a situation. And we've got three different people who are participating in activities. And they are at three different elevations. With a partner, take a moment and discuss what you see. And based off of what you see, what do you think the word elevation means in this situation? So this would be a great time to pause and, and look at this. So I notice the first person, we've got a hiker. And they're stating, I'm hiking, so I'm above sea level. And then we've got a person in a sailboat here, I'm sailing, so I'm at sea level. And then we have a person who's under the water. I'm scuba diving, so I am below sea level. So I notice that what we have here is a comparison of where they are in relation to sea level. So I have sea level, and I have above the sea level, and I have below the sea level. So I think elevation, because it says here they are at three different elevations, and so I'm going to make the inference here that elevation is where they are compared to sea level. Whether they are above sea level, whether they are below sea level, and how much above or below sea level. So thinking back to the example one here, oh, you know what, I want to look at something else here. So if this were a number line, everything is in comparison to sea level. So I'm going to say that the level of the sea is equal to the zero. And then we have the positive numbers that are above the sea level. And we have the negative numbers that are below the sea level. So in this situation, zero represents the level of the sea. And we are measuring everything in comparison to the level of the sea. So the scuba diver is at a, in a negative elevation. And the hiker is at a positive elevation. Normally, we would measure this in feet. OK, so thinking back to example one, we're going to use the following information to answer questions. The scuba diver is at 30 feet below sea level. The sailor is at sea level. The hiker is two miles, which is 10,560 feet above sea level. And we need to write an integer for each of these situations. Well, the scuba diver is at 30 feet below sea level, so that's a negative 30 feet. The sailor is at sea level, so that's zero feet. And the hiker is two miles above, which is 10,560 feet. So they are at 10,560 feet. So we can represent these real life situations using our integers. Now a really important concept is what is zero? And I don't think I emphasized this enough in, in the lesson yesterday, um, lesson two. It's really important that we have a concept of what the zero is standing for. What does it count? Um, so in this situation, zero is the sea level, and we are counting everything 
in relation to or in reference to sea level. So where are they compared to sea level? All right, so use an appropriate scale to graph each of the following situations on the number line to the right. Also write an integer to represent both situations. So one of our I can statements for the lesson is that we can use an appropriate scale to create a number line. And we have a hiker who is 15 feet above sea level. So that's going to be a positive integer of 15. And I have a diver who is 20 feet below sea level, which is negative 20 feet. Now, if I'm going to make a number line, I need to know what zero is. What does the zero represent? Because these numbers are in relation to zero. So what is zero standing for? Zero is sea level. So I need to pick a spot here to put a zero on. And I'm going to abbreviate here and put this as, well, you know what, I want to abbreviate sea level. And I need to have a scale here that when I count, I will land on the 15 and I will land on the 20. Now, both of these are multiples of five, so I think I'll count by fives on my number line. Five, 10, 15, 20. And then going below sea level, negative five, negative 10, negative 15, and negative 20. So the hiker is at 15, and the diver is at negative 20. I suppose I could add here that we are measuring in feet. Now, analyzing my number line here, would it make sense if I were to count by 20s for my scale? So if I were to pick a zero point here and go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, negative 20, negative 40, negative 60. For the numbers 15 and negative 20, does this scale make sense? Well, I can find the negative 20 feet pretty well. It's right here. And I can guess that the 15 feet is probably about here. But this scale is probably not the best scale to use for the numbers that we have. It's the same pro well, similar problem. What if I counted by ones? One, two, three, four, five. And I would have to keep going up to get to the 15. And then I would have to go all the way down to negative 20 down below. The scale would show the numbers, but does it fit with what I'm working? So there's always a decision-making process when we put a scale on a number line. What is going to probably work the best? So think that through carefully as you do these problems. All right, exercise 3A. For each statement, there are two related statements, one and two. So statement one and statement two. Determine which statement is expressed correctly and circle it. Then correct the other related statements so that both parts are stated correctly. So one of these is written correctly and one of them isn't. We need to figure out which one is correct, and we need to fix the one that is not correct. The depth of the submarine is negative 800 feet below sea level. 800 feet below sea level can be represented by the integer negative 800. Well, I'm really liking number two here. I think it's correct. And on the first one, my concern, what kind of bugs me, is they have this negative 800 here, and then they have below sea level. And in lesson two, we emphasized you use one or the other, but you don't use them both at the same time. So I could have the depth of the submarine is negative 800 feet, or I could have the submarine is 800 feet below sea level,
because the below sea level and the negative mean the same thing. So I need one of them, but I don't use both of them at the same time. And when we talk about opposites of opposites, that's kind of what we're getting into here um, in English and grammar class. Uh, we would call this a double negative. We've got a negative 800 here, and then we're doing the negative of the negative, or the opposite of the negative. All right, exercise 3B. Same directions. The elevation of a coral reef with respect to sea level, sea level is given as negative 150 feet. The coral reef is 100 feet below sea level. All right, so there's my below sea level. And I don't have a negative in there, so I'm right now feeling like number one is going to be in good shape. It's going to be a good one, but let's see what number two looks like. The depth of the coral reef is negative 100 feet below sea level. So I've got this negative and then I've got another negative. I use one or the other, but I do not use them at the same time. So number one, looking good. Number two, depth of the coral reef, is 150 feet below sea level. Or coral reef is at a depth of negative 150 feet. One or the other, the negative or below sea level, but I don't use them both at the same time. All right, so in class we would have an exploratory activity. Uh, work in groups of three or four to create real-world situations involving money, temperature, elevation, and other real-world scenarios. And these are the components that your scenarios must have. So this would be a great activity to work on at home. And the second part of the challenge here, uh, so you view each real-world situation. So when we talk about real world situations, um, for example, here is a real world situation. And for that, you would have the title, you would state that it's sea level. You would write the situation based on the title. And when we say using at least two points, so the coral reef is 150 feet below sea level. The mountain top is 15,000 feet above sea level. So when we say using two points here, we're talking about we have two different integers that are represented. Include a blank number line, a picture, an illustration, but that is less important than these first two steps. And then make sure you have an answer key. And then in class, we would actually go around and we would look at each of the situations, write the integers, and we would put the points on the number line. So a little bit hard to obviously do in a YouTube video, but maybe something that you could complete at home with friends or family members. All right, so closing. How did we record measures of elevation on a number line? Well, elevations above sea level are positive numbers, and they are above zero. Elevations below sea level are negative numbers, and they are below zero. Is negative 90 feet below sea level an appropriate answer to a question, why or why not? Pause and think about that for a second. Come up with an explanation. No. No, it's not okay. You've got the negative and the below sea level. By themselves, each, they're okay put them together, they're not okay. You do not need the negative sign to write 90 feet below zero because the word below in this case means a negative number. You're saying below twice. Is below? Below. Ugh. So please, please don't do that. 
All right, so a quick look at some ICANN statements. I can use positive and negative numbers to indicate a change, a gain or a loss in elevation with a fixed reference point. I can use vocabulary precisely to describe and represent situations involving integers. We've used vocabulary for money. We've used vocabulary for temperature. And we have used vocabulary for elevation in the last two lessons. I can choose and apply an appropriate scale for a number line when given a set of positive and negative integers to graph. And, and I've emphasized in both lessons, we have to think carefully about the situation um, as we choose that scale. What is going to give the best representation of these integers? So that concludes module three, lesson three. If you've got questions, make sure you talk to your teacher and make sure you complete your problem set.